technical difficulties, our half hour. And um, trust that you're just blessed coming in and going out. Praise God. We're teaching on Wednesday nights on the subject of prayer. And we have covered over the, uh, we've been covering uh, a couple of types of prayer. I'm not going to write, I'm not going to relist them all. If you, if you don't have them, please go back and um, uh, watch some of our, pre, our previous programs from the past uh, th couple, three weeks. I uh, think last Wednesday because we weren't here because of, uh, because of uh, Thanksgiving. We did not have a uh, service. They didn't have the building open, et cetera. And so if you go back, you'll see, you, we'll have those all listed on the, um, the, um, the, um, of, uh, and the, there we go. I was sharing so everybody else could see this. And um, but where are we? Share to group. Say something. Write post. Post. And Wilkeman. All right. Try to get all that. That's, that takes time, and I can't do this before we get started because we're not up before we get started. And um, glory. Okay. Now, so uh, you go get those uh, different types of prayer. We have categorized and listed them. I believe we left off last time with the prayer of binding and loosing. Um, we, were, we had talked about, first of all, obviously, one of the uh, first prayers that we usually talk about in prayer is uh, the prayer of faith. Uh, we used uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18 as our foundation text, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And remember, all prayer, Paul says in Ephesians 6.18, again, our foundation text, okay? All prayer, one, one translation says, um, all kind. Of prayer and uh, you know brother Hagin used to say some folks go well prayer is prayer isn't it he said yeah and sports is sports but we don't play them all by the same rules and we don't pray all the same prayer by the same rules there's, there's different rules that govern different types of prayer okay so we've been talking about um, as we said the prayer of faith so we have covered the prayer of faith um, which we, we refer to as the prayer of believing and receiving and then we were covering the prayer of binding and loosing. And um, we, we said in talking and referencing this one uh, that this is the, uh, the authority prayer. Okay? That we have authority in the name of Jesus. This, this is an authority prayer. We have authority to bind and loose principalities, powers, mights, dominions, rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. We are, we are anointed and called and have the power to take authority over these things amen hallelujah and so um i'm not really sure i think i think we kind of wrapped that up the other week but i'm not totally 100 percent positive um so it's, it's, sometimes you kind of are, are moving along and thinking i'm done then you're not done you think you're done you're not done so anyway um but we'll just kind of we'll kind of go back there just a little bit uh before we try to launch off and, and get run off from there uh, looking over in Luke, Luke's gospel, hallelujah, and we get down into um, hey, 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 you know what's Luke's gospel? All right. Talk about going blank. Jesus said that what you know. Um, behold, I give you power over all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means hurt thee. And talk about absolutely losing that. Somebody look it up and find it for me. I did not. Is Luke something, what, 19? Yep, yeah, Luke 10, 19. That's, that's where I got, that's where I was getting mixed up. Luke 10, 19. 
I knew the 19 was in there. Just got my chapter mixed, mixed up. Remember we talked about um, verse 17. It says, the, the 70 return again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils or demons are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto him, I beheld like Satan as lightning fall from heaven. And behold, I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Um, remember, we talked about how the word power first that Jesus uses is authority. The second one is dunamis, the miraculous supernatural power that God gave us authority. Uh, so they said this, remember, this is the sending out of the 70. Jesus sent them out two by two and gave them, um, you know, power. Uh, to go do things. He sent him two by two was for every place he would go and say, go your way, um, carry neither script nor purse, you know, so forth and so on. Um, goes on, tells them that, you know, what to do to preach the gospel there and to, you know, shake the dust off their feet. They don't receive them, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then they go out and then they come back. When they come back, um, they come back, oh man, devils are subject to us through your name. Okay? And uh, he said, I beheld Satan as light fall from, as lightning fall from heaven. You know, and then we talked about how, I know we did talk about this, how that, that was when J Satan came up to God, came up to the throne of God and said, I'll send my throne into the heavens, I'll be as the most high. He was trying to take over heaven, and God said, I'll cast your profane out of my presence, and boom, he left at the speed of light. Probably warp factor, we don't know. They had, Star, Star Trek got to warp factor nine. Um, there's probably a warp factor, I would guarantee there's a warp factor God has that and, and the warp is the, is the theoretical concept that you can bend light and, and it speed up time uh, and, and light travel, uh, that you can bend time uh, in, in warping it, and it accelerates the speed of light. And uh, those are all uh, physics theories that are way, way beyond my um, reasoning. But under that, guys, Satan left faster than, you know, and then the speed of light. Let's put it like that. Okay? And then he tells, tells the disciples they had the power, they had the authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. So we in, in the church have authority. Um, oh, in, in Ephesians chapter 2. Um, chapter 1. He says, um, verse 21 for, uh, oh, well, better go to 20. Which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. Better back up. 19. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which has become put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. So we find in Ephesians, that all the principalities and powers are under the feet of Jesus. And the body of Christ is the church. He gave all things to him to be the, uh, you know, the head of the church. Gave him the head, of, uh, the head over all things to the church. Let's read this without the italicized words. Because they're not in the Greek. Um, which is, um, and hath put all things, or all, under his feet, and gave him the head over all to the church. To the church. He gave it to the church. He took his authority that he had put all things, God put all things under the feet of Jesus, and he gave it to the church, okay? Which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. So that authority was transferred to the church. Ephesians chapter 1, 20 through 23. Authority is transferred. And, of course, you would have to add to that, you know, Mark 16, oh, 15 through 20, Matthew 28, 18. You know, um, authority has been transferred to the church. And obviously we said, where was it, how was it transferred? In the, someone finish it here for me. Yeah. 
through the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. It's transferred to the church in the name of Jesus. I believe the more revelation we have along this lines, the more understanding we have along the lines that we have an authority in the name of Jesus that's been transferred to us, the bolder we become in ministry to people. The more, the, the, a greater boldness comes on us when we understand this. We're not coming kind of cow down and hoping. We're coming with a confident assurance. It almost looks like um, Jack Benny. <laughs> Can you see that? That, that, that <laughs> oh, some of you are just too young to know that one. <clears throat> Hallelujah. I, I, the more I, the older I'm getting, and the longer I've been in ministry, and the more opportunities I have to minister and have the Holy Spirit direct and, and be able to minister in those veins, the more I understand, the better I understand this, the more boldness I have. Now, boldness is not arrogance. Okay? Arrogance comes when I am somebody, I'm really something, I'm a, hot, I'm a spiritual hot shot. Okay? That's, that's arrogance. Okay. I'm gonna go get, I'm gonna go raise them up, you know. Um, not because the Lord's directed them to, but because they they're arrogant. That's right. The I comes in. Versus I'm going as the vessel of God, but He has given me this authority. My confidence is not in I'm a hot shot. I'm the man of faith and power. My confidence is in what Jesus has done and when he's transferred to me. And I stand in that, God, that, mo, that, com, that, that confidence, that confident assurance, boldness, that I can stand and speak with an authority because of what Jesus has placed in me, placed in you, placed in the church, can stand in that place with that. Boldness doesn't come across with the, it comes across as a sweet savor of life. It brings hope and faith to people as it's being demonstrated. Okay? Boldness does. Boldness in who we are and the authority we have in Christ. Because it's spiritual and it's coming out of what God put there. And so what as it comes out of what God put there, as it comes out of, it, it's really taking what he gave and then redistributing it as needed. But it's him still. You simply were the distribution point. You're the distribution point of God using you. So it's not you. You know, And that's where we get into trouble. We begin to think it's the man. Now, some men have been able to lend themselves and give themselves and avail themselves more to these things because of their walk with the Lord than others, but it's still not them. It's, it, it, it is the Lord. It, it's, um, it's God at work. Okay? So we, we just need to, we need to really become aware of this authority. I'll tell you, I've, I've had a couple of events in the past year that I've been able to go do and minister. And there was a difference in ministry when I understood this. More than ever before. Just more than ever before. Because, because I'm, saying, I'm saying things with such confidence that but it's not me trying to be, you know, the, the faith preacher. Yeah, let me let me show them what I got, you know. And and I'll, I'll tell you, you know, some of that some of that happens with immaturity in people. Is there is there just there's an immaturity in ministry? That's why Paul wrote and said, "Don't lay hands on and lay hands on no man suddenly. Don't separate into the ministry early, too early. It, it's not good for them." Okay, that, that's what that was about. Don't don't lay hands. Don't separate them. Let them grow. 
let them mature, bring them up. That don't mean they're a certain age, but they need to spiritually mature. Okay, just don't. We, we get some of these hot shots who go out there and think there's something else, and they they want they, they want to be recognized, and they got all these. You know. Like I said, then somebody's been married six months, and they go go out and do healing healing uh, marriage seminars. You know, they're, they're they're this cute little husband and wife team, and they got this marriage seminar down. You don't know squat, doodly squat, as we say down east. Don't really know what doodly squat is, but I do know that it, you, you don't know doodly and you don't know squat, and some most of the time you, you, you don't know doodly squat. Okay, you ain't. Yeah, and there are they got they got their tape series. They're marketing their ministry on marriage. They're gonna come in and you know they like, they found all the scriptures. And they listen to everybody else's stuff, and they kind of clean, and they got all this stuff together, and they're putting on these powerful seminars. They don't even know what they're talking about. They ain't had a fight yet. We're never going to have one. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Y'all remember men are from uh, uh, Venus, women from, uh, men are, women are from Venus and men are from Mars or something, you know, and they were out there and all these people were filling up these uh, auditoriums and stuff to listen to this man and woman teach on marriage and the differences of men and women, and about two years later they were divorced. kind of messes up the ability of them to be effective in teaching everybody else how to understand men and women. You didn't understand each other. Yeah, but you made, made a lot of money. Made a lot of money selling their tapes and their, and their seminars that everybody bought into. So, And they're both from Jupiter. <laughs> they were stupid. <laughs> My church is awesome, guys. Just not here, Dick steps in <laughs> and got, got those good little quips there. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, um, and thank you, Dick. That was good. Yes, they were both from Jupiter. And um, I think one of them went ahead and went out to Pluto. <laughs> <coughs> That's why Jesus kind of pulled them back in. Don't rejoice that they were, deep, they were subject to you, but that your name's in the Lamb's book of life. So he, he wasn't rebuking them. He was drawing them back in. He was trying to get them to have the proper perspective. Okay, you you got authority, guys. Don't don't let it go to your head that it's not you. You rejoice that your name is in the Lamb's Book of Life. You know, you got eternal life. God's in you. Okay, and then walk in this in in a boldness. But boldness carries with it. A humility. And that humility is the recognition, as we've already kind of stated, and I'm just going to kind of reword it here. That boldness operates under a humility that recognizes that it's God at work through them and the authority that He gave them that brings it to the table in a way that's effective. God glorying, and that's probably not a right, right way to say it, giving glory to God. God says, I'll share my glory with no man. Okay? And so um, when we start beginning to think it's us, I think I, I heard preachers say one time, and one I, I respected and still respect, I just think he shouldn't. I, I think I know what he was trying to say, but he should have never said it. Because it was, you know, uh, if the Bible wasn't true and Jesus wasn't real and God wasn't real, uh, I'd still live by faith because it works. Well, if Jesus wasn't real and God wasn't real and the Bible wasn't true, we wouldn't have any faith because it came from him, okay? It was one of those statements that I think I, think I can kind of understand where he was trying to come from, that faith works, and trying to make that a, a, like a bold. But when you remove the God factor out of anything we do, the factor that God is, intrinsically involved in it that it's birthed from god that it's his glory it's his faith that he deposits in us that he you know he deals us the measure of faith it comes out of him faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god it's birthed out of the seed of god when we remove that out of any equation we get to an arrogance about us and about our abilities that doesn't accomplish what needs to be accomplished in the earth Okay, now can things happen because somebody's there? Yeah, uh, remember Jesus rebuked 
told, told the disciples it didn't matter if people preached. Um, we told them not to preach in your name because you weren't of us. Okay? And I think it was Jesus or Paul. Um, let me think, I'm trying to think about whether that was, was Acts or in one of the Gospels. Um, just rejoice at the fact, the fact that, that Jesus is preached. Okay? They weren't of us. They weren't with us. Um, you know, whether they preach for gain or, pre, you know, preach, you know, in other words, if they had the right motives or wrong motives, God can take the message and still minister to people. Okay, that, that's, what, that, that's, that's the import on that passage is whether it was shysters or real, the Holy Spirit can still take that word and minister to people because it's still his word. Even if, they, even if people are using it, aren't doing it with integrity and honesty, it's still his word. And he could still take that and minister to people. I, I've seen, I know of people who've gotten saved in gimmick preachers' ministries. And I know they were gimmick preachers. I know enough about the internals of their ministry and so forth to know that they were, they were about as um, 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 credible as a $3 bill. Okay? Um, you know, and, but yet I know people who got saved in their meetings. They really did. And um, so we, we have to uh, understand that even though we see, these, just because somebody sees something happening, I mean, we know it's an arrogance and it's a, it's a self-promoting thing. We can't go, oh, that's what I need. No, we need boldness. That boldness is understanding our authority is in the name of Jesus. It came to, it's been transferred to the church, but it's God working in us. When we go and we minister to people, we're wanting God to use us simply as the redistribution center, simply as the vessel for which he flows through, because it's him. And in the end, he's to get all the glory and all the praise and all the honor for everything that takes place. Because if you went without him, you wouldn't get a gnat healed. Not that you would want to, and if you ever tried to, I might hit you. <laughs> Gnats are one of my least favorite insects. I mean, I grew up in Eastern Carolina, and we had a lot of gnats. And you'd be, you know, working out in the yard, sweat just because you know, down there we we'd go out in the mornings with a knife and just cut the air and stick it in the freezer for ice. <laughs> I mean, you just you know, take a hunk of air, stick it in the freezer, have ice that afternoon. Um, get in the tobacco field, you got tobacco under, you know, you got tobacco under your arms, sweat stripping, and all the gnats are all in your eyes and everything, and you can't do a thing about it because if you hit your face with your tobacco, all the tobacco gum and get it all over your face, you know, get sticky in the eyebrows, and it just, it's, it was, there wasn't anything you could do. I hate gnats, so don't pray for a gnat. We're going to lay hands on you. Praise the Lord. So, but what I do, I do, I just kind of wanted to, leave with on this subject that in our binding and loosing in our authority um, when we walk in boldness in this arena it, it's birthed and it's coming out of this our knowledge of this authority there's so much confidence in what you're doing you don't have to feel the hooba hooba hoobas you don't have to get goosebumps and get the thrills and the chills of, of, of the, the, the ointment. We used to have our, our head usher back in our home church. And we, were, we, we got, uh, came up in as a, um, after we were, after I graduated from Raymond, we were in growing in ministry and getting ready to, you know, launch out on our own eventually. The, the usher used to call the anointing the ointment. The ointment's flowing tonight. <laughs> yeah, Brother Sonny was a character. Yeah, walk over to you with his bucket and shake it. You know, to get your offering. <laughs> you know, if you better, you better have something because he's gonna shake it at you. <clears throat> I guess that's a good, good kind of head usher to have. They're gonna get the money. You, know, you had a couple people out back tied to ropes, hanging it upside down, shaking them, getting getting everything out of their pockets. But <clears throat> when we recognize that, and, and and so we don't have to feel that that, that. you can be dry, but you know that what you speak. I love it. Let's, I'm like any good Pentecostal, charismatic. You love to feel the presence of God. You love to feel the thrill and the chill of the glory running, running up down your spine and your hair standing up on the back of your neck. And I mean, all you know, because the presence of God is electrifying. Not grease, but God. Okay? 
It's electrifying. <laughs> you know, um, but when you, when you understand this, you don't have to have any of that to speak with an authoritative boldness to minister. Yeah, it is a tad bit nippy in here tonight. I think it's, it's, it's cold outside, but it's nippy in here. Um, uh, I, I, I'll be honest with you. I, I went and ministered to someone uh, this week. I didn't feel a thing. I did not feel a thing. I like it when I feel. I like it when I lay hands on people. And you feel, you literally feel the power of God flow out of you into them. I like it. Because, you know, you like, uh, I know it went in there. I felt it go. But it didn't even phase me. I didn't feel anything. Because I wasn't speaking. I wasn't ministering out of feeling and out of, well, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm it. I was ministering out of that boldness of my understanding of the authority. And so I knew. I just had this confident assurance. This is, this is happening. And um, the person came out of the situation. And there, there's still things going on, but it came out of that particular stage of the situation faster than the doctors thought it was going to happen. And it's going to continue to be that way. But it I'm, what I'm trying to say is, if we understand this, see, we could go minister in that boldness, and it not, and there's no, pr it takes all the pressure off of you to perform. I've got to get this done. <laughs> I mean, you know, I've told everybody about this charismatic stuff and this healing stuff and this, you know, all this, all this stuff I've, I've shared about Jesus being the healer, and you know, man, we got to, we got to get something done here, and all this pressure comes on you. And now you're trying to put the you're put the um, you're trying to stand in your own might and your own ability instead of the authority he's given you. And suddenly, when that switches, all that pressure of performance on your part goes away. And if you're a young minister, listen and listen to me well here. Because it's never going to be about you. And it's never going to be about you performing. I heard Dad Hagen say one time. He said, I've had people fall dead in my prayer line. What did they do? They put them on the front row, a, a pew, and went on down the line and ministered to everybody, everybody else there. Now, I guarantee you, 99.9% .9 of the ministers I know, if that happened to them, they they it stopped the service because it would get into their head about what is everybody going to think about what I'm doing here and about me and about my ministry and about my anointing and all this. Not your ministry, not your... And, and I understand the term. I, it's, we have to have an understanding underlying it's not your ministry and it's not your anointing. I know we say that in categorizing or, or, or trying to describe and, and I'm not be rebuking that. I'm, I'm not trying to make that you know a big deal. But Underlying, we really, really understand, it's the Lord has given the gift. It's the Lord who's at work. It's the Lord using us. Uh, it's his anointing he's deposited and given. Um, and, and so in that sense, uh, he, that he's, he's deposited in you, it's yours as a steward, not as a possession. Okay? And, um, but when we, when we kind of get to that point that we no longer feel the pressure for us to perform, that there's a boldness to do things. And then we just step away from it because it's, a, it's, in, it's God at work now. It's God doing it. I don't have to make it happen. And, and I can't. You're right. Um, but I don't have to kind of keep, keep put, you know, pushing buttons and pulling levers until we, we strike something that, that actually works. There's a, there's a liberation to do in the kingdom, the things that we, we desire to see done for, for God and through by God and through us to help people. Amen? And we're going to stop right there because I'm about to freeze. The air conditioning is running in this building. And uh, my hands are, are, are beginning to ache because the cold air is blowing on. So we love you. God bless you. Enjoy your fire. Turn on your heat. I'm going home and getting by mine.
And remember this, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Until next time, we love you and God bless you. Yeah.